Hello everyone, my name is Nicoba and welcome to Satisfactory. Today we're going to be taking a look at our next factory. Now, our goal here is to start working towards our next milestones, which are going to be basic steel production and vehicular transport. Now you can see that both of these milestones contain a number of components, mostly that we already have, but there's one important one that we don't, those modular frames. And we are going to need a lot of modular frames. So today, we're going to talk about how to build an efficient modular frame factory. Now, before we head up and start work on our modular frame factory, I want to highlight that I have gone ahead and set up an awesome sink in our base here. And we're going to go ahead and just sink a bunch of our spare Caterium quickwire. We have a full storage container full of quickwire, so we have plenty to last us until we're ready to sort of fully automate more production here in uh, a slightly later part of the game. And so quickwire is one of those things that's worth a lot of points and you can produce a ton of it. And so just by letting this run for a few hours, we were, we're already up to 31 printable coupons and that will give us an opportunity to buy plenty of the items in the Fix It Awesome shop that will let us sort of dress up our factories in a little bit once we're ready to do that. Now, I'm not quite ready to buy things yet. And the reason for that is that in particular, what I'm looking for is windows and windows will require us to finish steel production as well as to find and tame some quartz veins because those are sort of the ingredients for building windows and so you can't unlock them until you have those available. So once we do that, we'll be able to unlock windows there uh, and, and that's something that's coming soon and then we'll come back through and sort of dress up our factory a little bit. But for now, let's go ahead and start looking at our modular frames. Now, in order to build modular frames, we let's see, pull up a, a quick assembler here take a look at what they require. Modular frames are going to require iron rods, it's easy enough, and reinforced iron plates. Now we're going to need quite a lot of these and this recipe only makes two per minute pulling 12 iron rods and three reinforced iron plates. So let's go ahead and go looking for some iron that we can use this because this is a, a fully iron recipe. All right, I have found the location for our modular frame factory. You can see that we're just a little ways west of our main base area and over here to the south uh, have a couple of pure iron nodes now these are going to be great for us we have two of them side by side and then a couple more just across the way and we are going to tame one of these for our modular frame factory we're going to try and build a factory that makes 10 modular frames per minute all right, as night falls on our factory location, I think it's time for us to get our chainsaw out and clear out the space for our factory. As I was starting to build our factory, we came across another lizard dog. Let's go ahead and capture this guy and get him back to base with our other friends. And then we will have a couple of them that we can uh, hopefully farm power shards from. All right, I've gone ahead and laid out the basic foundation for our factory. This is an eight by six grid, and we're gonna use this to construct our modular frame factory. This factory is gonna take 240 iron ore per minute, and we'll be making use of the alternate recipe for cast screws. The factory is gonna be divided into four floors. The first floor is gonna be for smelting. We're gonna need eight smelters here. All right, let's get those smelters up with some sorters and mergers. All right, we're gonna place a conveyor pole on the center of a foundation, one unit in from the wall. That's where we're gonna place a conveyor lift running on the outside of our building up to the next floor. The next floor is going to be located three wall heights up. Go ahead and build those. Next, let's lay down our next layer of foundation. All right, the second floor is where we're going to place our constructor layer. This layer is going to be producing iron plates, 
screws using the cast screw alternate recipe and iron rods. All right, here's our second layer laid out. This is our construction layer and we're using a center fed belt system. You can see I've got uh, a total of seven constructors on the far side and six constructors on the near side. That should be all we need. You can also see I've left this gap here. That's just sort of to signify the break in constructors. These last four on the end are gonna be going into iron rod production and they're unique. The five on the far side before that are gonna be our constructors for our iron plates and the four on the near side are gonna be our constructors for our screws. So let's go ahead and set up some mergers to, to get all these belts wired up and then we'll also go around and set the recipe on each of these. All right, with the second story of our modular frame factory starting to come to life, let's go ahead and get started on the third layer. Our third floor is gonna be our first assembler layer where we're producing the reinforced iron plates. Now, in order to do this, we're gonna use a bottom fed belt system, which means we're gonna create a sandwich layer in between our second and third main stories. That's what this is gonna be. And in order to do that, we're gonna create a one sort of four meter foundation height layer in the center there. And then we're gonna rebuild our third story above that. And inside this is where we will place our logistics uh, for that third floor. In order to plan out our sandwich layer correctly, we're gonna go ahead and need to place our assemblers. Now we're gonna need three assemblers producing reinforced iron plates here. I think what I like to do is have them sort of lined up with the second foundation for their inputs. So let's go ahead and just place those three assemblers down right there. Like that. And then we can eliminate that back line of foundations and that will let us access uh, those assemblers from underneath for the sandwich layer. And we're gonna start by placing the conveyor lifts feeding into our assemblers. These are gonna feed in from underneath and we're gonna have them alternating directions. So the one on the left is always gonna sort of face the east and the one on the right is always gonna face to the west. Let's go ahead and place those down. And now down here, we can take our inputs from the floor below. This one I believe is screws. Yeah, this one's screws. So we can go ahead and set up some splitters that will take this input line of screws and feed it into these three conveyor lifts. And then over here on the other side, we have our input line of plates and those will feed into those three. All right, with that done, it's time to set up the merger output for our reinforced iron plate assemblers. All right, with our reinforced iron plate system up and running, we can go ahead and start working towards our fourth floor. Now our fourth floor is going to be another sandwich layer. So let's go ahead and build up four wall heights in order to create the base foundation of that sandwich layer. And that will correctly sort of cover our, our assemblers there. And then we're going to go up one more wall height above that to create the actual sort of foundation for that layer. All right, our lizard doggos just gave us a yellow power slug and a purple power slug. So that is great. I think that actually means we can do some more research on the yellow power slugs. So let's go ahead and knock that. And I think we can also do the purple power slugs, although yeah, that'll actually take modular frames. So we'll have to do that research once we are done with this factory. All right, for us to properly construct our sandwich layer here, we're gonna to need to go ahead and place down our assemblers. Now we're gonna need five assemblers for our uh, our modular frames here. So let's go ahead and start placing those. And I think one thing we can do 
come out here and make sure that we mark where our two foot belts are. There's one there on sort of the, both the fourth foundation and one on the second foundation. That means we want our sort of merger belt or, or our, our upward belts to be on that third foundation there. So let's go ahead and take our assemblers and say that those are going to be placed like so in this location. We're going to need five of them. It's two, three, four, All right, I've gone ahead and removed that row of foundations, so let's go ahead and get our conveyor lifts placed in. And let's go ahead and get our splitters set up. And with that, our modular frame factory is starting to be up and running. You can see that the first uh, assembler has kicked on and is producing the modular frames. Those should be coming out along the belt shortly. Now we're using a manifold system for the entire factory, which means there's gonna be a little bit of backlog and it's gonna take a little while for this to spin up. I'm guessing probably just five or 10 minutes before it reaches full efficiency. Um, and even then it's going to be limited until we can get some better belts and the reason for that is we simply don't have the belts to move all of the ore we're mining to get it to all of the smelters and so on so we're going to let this run for maybe an hour and that should give us enough modular frames to go and unlock steel production and take a look at logistics mark three to get those upgraded belts so that we can come back and make this place a little bit more efficient Now, before we leave this factory, I wanted to address real quick why I haven't wrapped any of my factories. So I haven't put like an exterior shell on the outside of the building. And this is the reason. This doesn't look terrible. And it's the best I can come up with. I probably spent 15 minutes playing with colors for these bland, boring walls, trying to get something that looks good. And not being an exceptional artist, this is what I was able to do with the tools that I have, which is basically the color customizer and the plain fix-it wall, as well as the, the one height wall. And I am not satisfied with this. This is not satisfactory to me. It looks rather monolithic. It's, it's very efficient, I'll say that, but it's not what I want my factories to look like. And so I'm going to hold off on wrapping the rest of this factory or any of my other factories until we can get some more stuff out of the awesome shop and we've been building up some tokens to do that but notably what i'm looking for are walls uh and in particular the window walls the conveyor doors so that we don't have to be clipping through a a uh regular wall there uh and then uh possibly unlocking some additional wall textures or or other things like that so until we get those unlocked, I'm going to just leave my factories unwrapped and then I'll probably just do an episode where we go around and, you know, talk about building tips and wrap a bunch of factories and, and demonstrate a bunch of different techniques there. All right, we have made it back to our hub and I think we are just about ready to send off our basic steel production milestone. Let's get that loaded up and sent away. Now that is going to be the focus of our next episode, but before we wrap up for today, there's one more thing I want to take a look at, and that is the MAM. There are a few more pieces of research we can do with the MAM, particularly under Caterium. Uh, using just Quickwire, we were able to get down through Caterium Electronics, and now we have the opportunity to research AI limiters, Blade Runners, Mark II power poles, and smart splitters. And these are all things we're gonna want to research. We're gonna go ahead and get those knocked out real quick and play with them. And then uh, I think that's where we'll wrap up for today. So let's go ahead and get this research started. Looks like I need to grab some copper sheets, uh, but we can actually start on the, the Blade Runners right now. All right, with the Blade Runners knocked out, let's go ahead and dive into the next bits of research.
All right, I've gone ahead and equipped our Blade Runners. These are the uh, probably the most important early game upgrade you can get in terms of mobility because of how quickly they let you move, how high they let you jump, and their impact with fall damage. It's going to make it much safer to traverse the cliffs over near a coal power plant, as well as to work on taller buildings like our modular frame factory when we don't have to worry so much about fall damage. Like our, our lizard doggos have a couple things for us there. Uh, <laughs> you can also see you get some, some pretty impressive hang time when you do the slide jump trick. So that's where you, you crouch as you run into a uh, into a jump and you can use this to to jump a very, very long distance. All right, and with our smart splitters research all complete, we can go ahead and get started on power poles. We'll come in and finish this tree later once we have a little bit more advanced production underway. Uh, but let's go ahead and play with some smart splitters because those are a really powerful tool for us to use now. And how a smart splitter works is that it actually lets you divide up and use some degree of intelligence in terms of how things go. And to demonstrate this, I'm gonna be playing with our awesome sync and our Caterium input. You can see I've cleared out the storage chest there. I've actually put our Caterium stockpile in there, or our Quickwire stockpile rather. But we're gonna go ahead and use a smart splitter in order to branch out the incoming line in order to sort of make sure that we can keep a backlog of that filled up so that as we pull out of it, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, go away. And then when we're done with that, anything that's left over can go into our awesome sink. So I've gone ahead and built a smart splitter here. It's a, it looks and works like a normal splitter by default, uh, but you can see it takes the reinforced iron plates, rotors, and then an AI limiter, which is made with quickwire. So we can go ahead and run our conveyor lines into our different things and then take a look at the smart splitter. Now you can see there are inputs here and these are things that we can change in order to change how this works. Now you can see that here we've got uh, uh, a whole bunch of different items and we can decide what goes where in these different items. You can see by default, it seems to be pushing everything uh, through the center input here which I, I thought that it was meant to do the, the default behavior where it went through through them both evenly, but regardless. Now, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use the center input for quick wire. And then for the left, we are going to use overflow. Now overflow is marked as anything that can't go through any other output. Uh, we can also use any undefined, which is uh, if we wanted it to be a to work as a sorter so that all of our quick wire would go down one path and everything else would go down another path, perhaps into another smart splitter where we could sort of peel off another item and you could have those in, in a long line that then created sort of a storage area. We'll actually use that technique in a little bit. Uh, and then we can also block an output and have anything as an output, which, which uh, in theory, it should just sort of work in the default. But we're gonna go ahead and use overflow here. And what that means is that Nothing is going to go down this side path until the sort of main path, the one we blocked or, or we want quickwire to go down, is is uh, full. And then anything else that's sort of not defined anymore. So if we were to put something else in this, uh, you know, like just normal wires, any other item, it would try and send it down this left path as well. So what this essentially means is that we will fill this storage container with quickwire, and then any material we make that's Beyond that, we'll get sunk automatically, and that's a powerful technique. And we're actually gonna use this at a number of our factories. One of the things that I wanna do before we get too much further is actually put one of these same structures over at our uh, modular frame factory, because sinking excess modular frames, once we have that factory up and running, we're gonna fill a storage container pretty quickly. I think we will get a stack in, in five minutes, and I think there's uh, 24 stacks in here. So that would be, uh, two hours to fill a storage container. And that, you know, that's enough time for us to build a, a new power plant or something or a new factory somewhere. And so anything beyond that, before we get back over there or before we set up an automation line to pull those away, or if we end up expanding that automation line, we can sync in order to get tickets to unlock more stuff for our, for our factory. All right, folks, that is where we are going to leave it 
for today. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I certainly have. My name has been Dakoba, and I look forward to seeing you guys in our next episode. Have a great day.